Good evening from the Channel's newsroom here in London. The US President Donald Trump says the US must condemn bigotry, racism and white supremacy following a mass shooting in Texas and Ohio. Thousands of people attended a candlelight vigil in El Paso in Texas earlier to honor the 20 people killed in a mass shooting at a Walmart store. Religious leaders from various denominations led the ceremony where bells rang out for each victim. Many in the crowd wore El Paso Strong t-shirts. A 21-year-old white man arrested by police is believed to have posted an online document calling the attack a response to the Hispanic invasion of the state. Oh, I won't. Meanwhile, a large crowd gathered for a vigil in Dayton's Oregon district, lighting candles to mourn the loss of the nine victims who lost their lives in America's second mass shooting in under 24 hours. 24-year-old Connor Betts was wearing body armor and a mask when he opened fire in the crowded Ohio neighborhood. He killed nine, including his sister, and wounded at least 27 other people. This weekend, more than 80 people were killed or wounded in two evil attacks. In one voice, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. These sinister ideologies must be defeated. Hate has no place in America. However, Mr. Trump himself has come under attack by some, with critics pointing to his anti-immigrant rhetoric and opposition to gun control. And some experts believe the mood towards stricter gun laws in the U.S. is changing. Sentiments uh, in favor of stronger gun laws are more widespread than ever. And we saw in the 2018 nationwide midterm elections uh, for the first time in many, many years that support for stronger gun laws was an important issue that helped uh, a number of candidates running for office around the country to get elected. India's government has moved to revoke the part of the constitution that gives Indian-administered Kashmir special status in an unprecedented move likely to spark unrest. Sir. 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 The Indian Interior Minister Amit Shah, seen here arriving outside Parliament, made the announcement saying that sections of Article 370 will now cease. Article 370 had guaranteed significant autonomy for the Muslim majority state. There were celebrations among Kashmir Hindus on the news, but Kashmir is now in a state of lockdown with curfew-like conditions imposed and orders preventing the assembly of more than four people. Pakistan, which claims the territory as its own, has condemned India's decision to revoke the special status as illegal, saying it would exercise all possible options to counter it. Hong Kong's leader has warned that the city is on the verge of a very dangerous situation after protesters blocked roads and paralyzed train services during the morning rush hour. More than 14,000 people from 20 sectors vowed to join a citywide strike on Monday, according to the strike's organizers. Civil servants, who are ordered to be politically neutral, have reportedly agreed to take part. At the airport, more than 200 flights were cancelled amid disruption fears, while banks have been closed and subway services cancelled. The protests have now continued for nine consecutive weekends. Police again fired tear gas at protesters on Monday and have made 420 arrests since June the 9th when the protests began. At least 19 people have been killed in an explosion after several cars collided in the Egyptian capital of Cairo. 30 others were injured in the incident, which happened outside a hospital in the city centre late on Sunday. There was no official statement indicating it was an attack. The explosion happened when a car which had been travelling against the traffic hit three others. It sparked a fire that forced the evacuation of nearby buildings. CCTV in Guizhou province in China has caught the moment a young boy fell through a manhole cover and into a well. The three-year-old boy and his parents were walking along a street when the boy decided to test the broken manhole cover, which gave way. His parents frantically rushed to retrieve him and managed to seconds later. The boy suffered only bruises and scratches, and the manhole cover has since been repaired. And finally, last week we told you how one man's daring attempt to cross the English Channel flying on a hoverboard had failed. Well, over the weekend he tried again and this time succeeded. French inventor Frankie Zapata took off on Sunday from Sangat, just outside Calais. Flanked by helicopters using the jet-powered hoverboard he designed, he flew over the Strait of Dover in just over 20 minutes. His previous attempt had seen him fall into the sea, but this time he managed to make the 35-kilometer journey with a quick stop-off to refuel, landing safely in St. Margaret's Bay, close to Dover on Britain's southern coast.
And that's your international news around the world in five.